Welcome to Advanced Parallel Programming and the Law of Attraction. How to easily and effectively bring into alignment your thoughts, desires, beliefs, and actions, as well as create a positive parallel environment with those around you and the world as a whole. And now, broadcasting high atop the MacGuffin Towers in exciting Las Vegas, authors of the best-selling book, Advanced Parallel Programming and the Law of Attraction, Dr. Richard K. Nongard and R.J. Banks. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is R.J. Banks along with Dr. Richard K. Nongard. Say hello, sir. Hello, sir. <laughs> And uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Today, uh, today we're going to talk about, today is called the Scarcity Podcast, because we're going to talk about the scarcity thinking that people wind up programming themselves with that goes, and there's so many different reasons why, but we have got a list of reasons why you have scarcity thinking. We're like, oh, yeah, but I, this is just not for me. I can't afford it. I can't. Anyway, um, there's, you know, we all have a, a, an excuse for everything. But, uh, in fact, we did a show on that, huh? Yeah, we did. The, but the, uh, the great news here is that we're not just going to share a list of why people have scarcity thinking. What we're going to do is actually share some solutions. Exactly. So if you find that you suffer from scarcity thinking, you can get over it. That's why this podcast is so great, because we don't just address the problem. We give you solutions and resolution and at least point you in a direction that has been proven to be an accepted... An ex what am I trying to say here? A solution that works. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, and that's what the law of attraction really is all about. It's about putting ourselves into an alignment or a framework where we attract abundance. Now, I really wanted to retitle this episode uh, the Toilet Paper Podcast. The Toilet Paper <laughs> Why is that? Well, the reason why, of course, is a lot of people are in panic mode because they are afraid they might not have enough bunwad. You see, <laughs> a, a whole bunch of people have been out there hoarding. And uh, they have all the bunwad, and then there are people out there who have discovered they have a need for it, but they're discovering that the shelves are empty. And it, just a footnote: right now, we're in the middle of the coronavirus, and the shelves are empty. Right, and, and, and so what's happening is people are going into a meltdown mode, and that meltdown mode is, of course, I'm not going to have any bunwad. I'm going to have to walk around dirty. I am not going to Isn't be able amazing? to get what I need. <laughs> Talk about limiting thinking. Well, and that's why this toilet paper is not on the shelves. It's not on the shelves because of scarcity thinking. Now, yep. the reality here is there's plenty of toilet paper for all of us. It's just that some people have it and other people don't. And a uh, young mother who uh, is a Facebook friend of mine actually posted on Facebook the other day. She said, hey, I didn't hoard. Um, and I have, you know, two kids at home, and uh, we need toilet paper. Um, what am I supposed to do? And uh, and the reality is, two or three people chimed up and said, "Hey, I'll run an extra roll or two of mine over there." So, cool. in other words, she reached out to the universe and asked for help. So often, when we need something, we're reluctant to ask for help. But we can also come up with creative solutions. Rob, let's say you needed toilet paper. Uh, I called you up the other day. I said, hey, Rob, how much toilet paper do you have? Yep. Because I, I have some extra toilet paper. You told me you had plenty of toilet paper. Yes, I did. But let's just imagine you didn't. And I didn't have any to bring you. Then I would just get very creative. <laughs> what, what could you do to solve that problem? Well, I, I don't know. In my, in my opinion, you know, it's like cleaning up your, your hiney back there. There's plenty of solutions. Um, there's the bidet method. There is a, a wet wash rag and a dry paper towel. Me I mean, there's so there's many. There's take a shower there's, method. There's, 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 I don't know if I'd take a whole shower if I pooped. I, I think don't know I if you didn't have any, uh, <laughs> if you didn't have any towels, you didn't have any wet wipes, but there's always a solution. And that's what then I'm you trying. go outside and find a leaf. Right, I've, right. I grew up camping up in the Sierra Nevadas and long as it's not poison ivy leaves, you're doing okay. <laughs> so th there's always a solution. In other words, Rob, exactly. even though it might seem when we look at the empty shelf like this is the end of the world, the reality is uh, we're going to find a solution. Yeah. Um, um, Mark Uzak just posted last night on Facebook. I saw, you know, everybody's running to the, ran to the store. They're getting meat and all that kind of stuff. And it was over at the meat, th and it was just absolutely cleared. It was empty. The meat shelf at the grocery store he was at. But then he went over to the egg thing, and there must have been the full egg, the egg area, right. completely full. That's an alternative. That is raw protein right there, 
and eat boiled eggs instead of a hamburger. It doesn't matter. It's, uh, and, you know, and a week from now, the hamburger will be there and the eggs won't. Probably. I think the, the answer to scarcity thinking is in acceptance, to recognizing that I have all that I need today. Yeah. Um, as long as we're breathing, we're actually okay, even if the world is in turmoil. Let's move away from a discussion of sort of immediate things are going on here. One of the things that I see, though, as a therapist, is I see people with scarcity thinking in their relationships. Uh, What I mean by that is they think, well, if my, uh, let's take a second marriage, for example, right? Bob and Bertha get married, and uh, and Bob has some kids. And and Bertha is jealous of Bob's relationship Mm -hmm. with his children. Very common. Very, very common. And this comes from scarcity thinking. It, it, it's from the belief that there's not enough that, that there's not enough love for everybody. Exactly. That 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 only only I can be loved. If Bob loves his children as well or his friends as well, then that that's going to take away from Bertha's love. Do you, do you see what I'm getting at here? I mean, I see exactly what you're getting at, and that that is that is a very widespread and a very programmed way of thinking and jealousy to me that's one of the worst low vibrational energies that is out there because it just ruins everything i think jealousy is actually the opposite of the law of attraction it's looking for what we don't want to manifest and that in that you know getting down to um to what we're going to talk about with this with with this uh, scarcity thinking there's a few things that uh Actually, I just uh, let's talk about this. Just what you were talking about, they that you know, so many people with that scarcity mindset, they have a problem being happy for other people and their successes because it's like if somebody else is happy is going to be happy, then that doesn't take away from your happiness. But anyway, what? Well, the Smiths. The, the that? Smiths had a song, uh, you know, Morrissey. Uh-huh. Uh, we hate it when our friends become successful. Yep. And you know that song always really. St- stuck with me because I know a lot of people who are paralyzed by resentment because somebody has something that they don't have. Uh, they have, you know, uh, musical success or mm-hmm. podcast success or mm-hmm. book sales success in our business, or somebody else has uh, a nice car. Or somebody else has a nice house or somebody else has a beautiful boyfriend. And, 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 and And I think Morrissey hit it out of the ballpark when he wrote that song and recognized that uh, we hate it when our friends become successful. And that comes from scarcity thinking. And that scarcity thinking has to be overcome. And the way to overcome it, the solution, is to share in the joy of their success. And you might have to fake it till you make it. But I know a lot of people who just won't go over there. Because then they have to confront their scarcity yeah, thinking. Yeah. But overcoming that by taking in a breath, putting a smile on your face, and saying, I'm here to share your joy with you. Yes, I do want to ride in your new Mercedes. Yes, I do want to sit down and have a drink with your new beautiful boyfriend or new beautiful girlfriend uh, and you. Yes. I look at that stuff as inspiration. God, when you come over with your new... Um Was it Infinity? I wanted to call it an Xfinity. My it's Infinity. An in- right, infin- right, right, I'm like... Right. I was so um, um, excited for you, and and I loved taking a ride and smelling the new car smell. Yeah, I'm mean, very excited for you. Yeah. But you know, one, one, so so continue on. I'm sorry. So to rather than saying to yourself, "Well, I'm blind, I can't drive," you shared in the joy of my new car exactly. smell when I got that brand. You know, and for many years, I sort of prided myself on I never bought a car till I had a hundred thousand mm. miles on it. Right? I didn't say that. And, and once I hit 50, I was like, you know, enough of that. I don't want car repairs. I want a warranty. And I've mm-hmm. been buying new cars. And I bought a new car every year for the last five years. And it's been absolutely great. But you shared in that joy with me. And that, that's so much better than, than being jealous of you or envious of you. And that's what transcends scarcity thinking. And it might be hard for people to do it. But you've probably heard that expression, fake it till you make it. Yep. And it actually works. And the reason why it works is because when we act as if, the as if becomes our reality. There you go. So now what what happens when we get to the point where we get so envious or jealous of people to where it's not it's no longer just a conscious thing that we just like subconsciously want them to fail or or well yeah you know i i see that uh often uh, again in the coaching work that i do you know i do a lot of business coaching i coach executives in Uh corporate success um 
And part of that, of course, is business strategy. But it turns out more often than not that it's really uh, about the personal traits that um, the executives who I'm working with um, sort of carry with them. And one of those is that on a subconscious level, they want not only competitors in the business world to fail, but they actually want the other teams, even within their company, to fail because oh. they want to be the one who gets the status and recognition. So it's all ego-driven. It is very much oh. ego-driven. But the way to transcend that ego is to recognize that we are a part of a whole and that there's enough recognition for all of us. But we're so programmed these days to look out for number one and you're the only one that matters and everything is... How do we get back into that not collective consciousness, but that we're a team, we're part of the human race. You know, I think on a subconscious level, we can reprogram ourselves. One of the ways to do that is, of course, with self-hypnosis, with meditation, with affirmation. These are strategies that actually work. I can see myself, well, there's a story. I love to tell this story because it's really a great story. It happened at the Special Olympics. I think it was in Washington State uh, years ago. And the uh, starter's gun went off, and the kids in the Special Olympics uh, were at the at the line, and they headed out towards the, uh, the sprint or the or whatever the mm-hmm. whatever the track race was, the track and field event, and, and one of the little boys he tripped and fell right out of the gate, mm-hmm. and, and, and he laid there with his wails not only of the pain of falling but the pain of realizing that he wasn't able to compete in the race, that there was no way he could win, and, and the other kids in that Special Olympics event they. They heard his wails. They heard his pain. They heard his cries. And one by one, they all stopped. They end up turning around and going back and picking him up. I think that is so. And they carried him together across the finish line, all of them being a winner. And that, to me, that, that I remember one of the shows that we did the other day, we were talking about competition and stuff. And, I mean, you ask me, where do I think about competition? And... I think this is a much better story than just screw you. You you bit the dust and just leave leave him and let him go. Well, and the way to practice. <laughs> That's why us special needs people are so much nicer. <laughs> the the way to practice, of course, making this change at a subconscious level is to share in the joy of success with others, to be a part of helping others. Um, I do some work. I'm the chairman of the board for Best Buddies Nevada. Mm-hmm. Um, in years gone by, I volunteered with another uh, with a number of different organizations, and I've really found joy in others gaining success. This is what helps us to transcend that subconscious desire to see other people fail, to break that pattern that's really impaired us and kept us from reaching our full potential. You see, here's the way it works in business. If the installation department is the best installation department in the entire state, if the sales department is the best sales department in the entire state, if the product development department is the best product development department in the state, if the delivery department is the best delivery department in the state, uh, if, if the executive leadership team is the best executive leadership team in the state, then actually what happens is everybody wins. Mm-hmm. But if at a subconscious level, we're glad to see that the you know the, 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 the product development team screwed up the last project, what that means is that in the end, if I'm the sales manager, um, my team's not going to have a great well, product now you, to Now sell. you have a, a, a good excuse to not do good at sales. And that is part of that right, because right, you right. have an inferior product because your R&D department screwed up and your manufacturer's right. behind schedule. So you can just go into... Uh, I, I can say it's not my fault. Exactly. That that's we, the Yabbitz that we disease we talked all. about that one time. Right. And so, that, in fact, that's another one that we can talk about right now is that you're, you're always having those negative thoughts and feelings, which is the Yabbitz disease, basically, as to, as like, as to why you don't uh, reach the target. Exactly. It's like, why even bother? You know, I've discovered this. In goal setting, we have a natural inclination, and that natural inclination is to see problems on the horizon and then revise our goals downward. Um, This is why goal setting can actually be a spiral to mediocrity because we don't want to not reach our goal. So we say, well, it it snowed, so that's why I couldn't get this done. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, other people didn't do their job. That's why I couldn't get it done. And because of these difficulties, you know, there's a, 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 you know, a, a, a lull in business or commerce for whatever reason. That's why I couldn't get it done. Um, and, and so we revise our goals downward. 
and, and that can actually be a trap for us. And now, is that kind of like a settle for thing? It, it is about? a settle for thing, exactly what it is. And then we feel good about reaching our goal, even though it was a goal rev- revised down. Now, that's in the business world. Mm-hmm. In our personal world, in our relationships, we do that as well. I've settled for this boyfriend or girlfriend because I've revised my goals downward because yeah. now I have baggage. Or now, because I've had problems in life, I'm not as desirable as I once was. And I see this negativity as a center of goal setting. And by revising those goals down, five years later, we find ourselves in a relationship that's not resourceful to us. Yeah, and that goes along with that that whole self-worth that we're always harping on about uh, you do deserve a great life and you do deserve abundance. And along with that that collective consciousness we can say collective success of uh of uh manifestation if you are on a high vibrational plane and you are manifesting what you desires and you share that with me i think then that 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 what I'm trying to say is just I don't know. I don't. It's, sometimes I have a hard time trying to <laughs> trying to get it out of well, my head. Well, but what I'm saying is, you're successful. You share your success with me, and now we're both successful. I share the, my success with somebody else, and the world's a happy place. Let me ask you a question directly related to the Law of Attraction book. Okay. You know, we we wrote the book Advanced Parallel Programming and the Law of Attraction. Previously, you wrote a book titled I Am and the Power of I the Am. Power of I Am and the Law of Attraction. <laughs> One of these days, you're going to get the title After of that book. After five years, I'll finally get the title <laughs> of the book correct. But let me ask you a pure Law of Attraction sure. uh, question. And that, that question, Rob, is um, is the world an abundant place or are there uh, scarce resources? If you look at, okay, look at the ocean. There is an abundance of water. That is the, the besides oxygen, H2O is the biggest resource on, on our planet. And if you go to the, oh, if we went to the ocean right now and you took out a cup scoop of water, is there going to be in left for anybody else? There will be plenty of water for everybody Okay, else. and then if I can. So if everybody on the coast from what, from California, from Baja, Mexico, all the way up to Canada, and everybody went out to the ocean, and they took a scoop of water, it's like, this is mine, this is what I got, even if they took a gallon. Is there going to be any water? Even if left? they took a fifty-five gallon drum or exactly. an entire water truck, you know. And when it comes to money, people have scarcity thinking about money. I, I have a friend. Uh, I'm convinced that he has every dime he's ever earned. Uh huh. And and, 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 <laughs> and and living a modest life is, I think, within your means, is a noble endeavor. But right. I'm afraid now that he's old like us, that he's never enjoyed the wealth that he's produced. Uh, there's a ton of money out there, isn't there, Rob? There is more than a ton. There's a billion, billion, billion tons of money out there. It's infinite piles of money just waiting for you they, to they, allow them. It, when we run out of money, what does the Federal Reserve do? They print more. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the way it works. You know, we no longer have a gold. Uh, a, a go- on, on our on our website, there will be a, a link to, to get your own. Billion dollars. No, your own printing press to yeah, make your own <laughs> But, you know, it, it, we used to have our dollar was backed by gold, yep. right? And so if there was a dollar bill, there was a dollar worth of gold in Fort Knox. And uh, they said, hey, let's stop doing that and let's just print as much as we mm-hmm. need. And that's exactly what goes on. And the reality is the this world is not a scarce place. There nope. are plenty of people to help us. We have over 7 billion people on this amazing? planet Earth. You know, what I tell people who say I can't find a relationship is – is that there are 7 billion people on the planet Earth. There's somebody for you. And there is plenty of resources for those 7. Look at the abundance. Just walk into a grocery store. Walk into an open market or a flea market. Look at the abundance of all the all the the res- all the food that you I mean well and the most amazing thing Rob is if it doesn't exist somebody will create it for us. There you go. You know, we have 3D printing now. So if you if you don't have what you... In fact, uh, uh, there was just a story I was reading. Uh, somebody was trying to put together a list of resources for 3D printers to print um, uh, face masks for the medical community oh, wow. when supplies were running low. 
And so there's always a solution, mm-hmm. even if those solutions don't seem clear. And that's where self-hypnosis can really become a tool. We can get clarity of mind. We can step into abundance. We can see the opportunity in front of us. When we stop either regretting the decisions of the past that brought us to this point or fearing the scarcity of the future, mm-hmm. and by just being still in this moment, I have what I need. I, I, I have... Um, the resources inside. You know, there's a, a theory in hypnotherapy and a theory in what's called neuro linguistic programming, and that is that all of us have all of the resources inside of us to solve any problem we're facing at any time. I call it Dorothy and the Ruby Slippers. There you go. <laughs> same same thing. They just made a movie out of that Absolutely. that one philosophy. She had those slippers with her the whole time and she was always looking everywhere else to uh to reach her goal when it's right there with her. You know, um I've enjoyed this topic. There are a ton of resources, and on our 365LOA.com um, webpage, there's actually a free affirmation that people can access. Mm-hmm. And this th- this affirmation that you created, uh, that you've posted on there, I think directly deals with helping us change that scarcity mindset and shifting it, 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 Yeah, it's called I am worthy. All my, all my affirmations right. are all I am affirmations, and this one is the I am worthy. And... Uh, we normally sell it for what ten bucks nine ninety five download, but through uh, through this podcast, you get it for free. All so you just, have to do just, is yeah. visit the web page, and you can access it. Yeah, scroll down, and you'll see uh, you'll see the uh, the the other element of the scarcity thinking is that we can actually move into abundance by sharing the law of attraction with mm-hmm. others. That's why we wrote the book Advanced Parallel Programming and the Law of Attraction. The subtitle is sharing. Uh, Sharing wealth and abundance with with, those you love. Right, exactly. So that we can all (laughs) prosper. This podcast is devoted to giving you those strategies and ideas. We would really appreciate it if you take the time to go over to iTunes, to Google Play, or to Stitcher, or wherever you're listening to podcasts, and rate the podcast. Podcasts live or die by the ratings. And here's the cool thing. There is an infinite number of stars that people can give us. So... Uh, help us reach abundance by rating this podcast if you've heard something that's helpful to you. Tune in at the same time, same station, same place next time for another edition of the 365 LOA, LOA Podcast. podcast. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, until next time, bye bye. You've been listening to 365 LOA with Dr. Richard Nongard and RJ Banks. For additional information, including free downloads, or to send them an email, visit 365LOA.com. That's 365LOA.com.